Gloria Steinem once said, most activists I know talk about burnout. How do you stop yourself from becoming exhausted? In the beginning, I didn't understand that this was not a brief effort, that this was my life. Once you understand that this is a lifetime effort, you begin to pace yourself and make sure you have support and include dancing and humor and love affairs in the revolution. If we don't have poetry and laughter along the way, we won't have it in the end. Here are some things that some of my colleagues and I do to burn on and not burn out. How do I cope with stress? For me, the most important thing is daily exercise. I ride a stationary bike or run outside six mornings a week. Gratitude counts for a lot. I am actively grateful for how lucky I am to be able to do things for animals who need us so desperately. Also, making sure to have a laugh every single day is very important. It might just be a meme, a joke, a funny podcast, a book, or a TV show, because laughing releases endorphins in the brain that promote a sense of well-being. And planning something fun might just be a plan to pick up food from my favorite vegan restaurant, going for a hike, or planning a vacation. But it is proven that having something to look forward to is important for mental health. When particularly stressed, I take some deep breaths, identify the cause of the stress, and then work out a plan to tackle things so that the work or situation is manageable. This might be talking to someone, asking for help, carving out time to catch up, getting more training, whatever it takes to get over the hump. Works for me. The two things that work for me is crying when I feel like I need to and writing down everything that I am grateful for in that order. Unless you're a robot, yes, it's okay to cry. But I also firmly banish sad thoughts if they start to occupy this computer between my ears. My friend once asked, does it help the dogs out there in the cold when you lie awake at night agonizing over them? No. Does it help you? No. So she said, try everything you can to banish the thought. Replace it with happy thoughts. Recite a mantra if you need to. But whatever you need to do, get a good night's sleep so that you can wake up in the morning refreshed and go out and help those dogs. I also relish going out into the countryside or along the river and have a walk and breathe in fresh air, listen to the birds, smell the earth, just admire the flowers. And I like sometimes getting away entirely and that allows me to air out my brain, see new things and get new ideas. I meditate and do yoga every day for 20 minutes. Yoga doesn't require being flexible, although you'll get there, or being in shape or having any money. It just requires that you bring yourself to the mat. Daddy, <laughs> When I'm feeling overwhelmed, I watch one of PETA's bear rescue videos. Being able to watch the bears finally be able to hibernate and not have their cubs ripped from them is so incredibly satisfying. I remind myself of the long game and what thorough patient work actually achieves. When I was 21, I gave out pamphlets outside of a Ringling Brothers circus and look at them now. Our collective perseverance destroyed them. Okay, so to fight stress, I find that getting a good dose of endorphins going is everything. I'm a long distance runner. So just getting outside and smelling the smells. And if I'm lucky, I see a rabbit. Or if I'm really lucky, I see a coyote. But these long distance runs for me are everything. It gets, gives me time to just kind of be out in the open and think my thoughts, kind of mull some work things and figure things out. Um, and so it does everything for me. Also, I think it's really important that you stay optimistic. Um, just think about where we were 10 years ago for the animals and realize how much we've accomplished and you can keep going and also hang around people who make you laugh and who are optimistic. Because if you're around people who are constantly down in the mouth about things, you're gonna get down in the mouth. And I'm gonna quote John Lewis, and that is get in good trouble, get in necessary trouble. Don't let things pass you by. If you see there's something wrong, speak out, never be silent. And it, it, besides what it does 
for the animals, it, it's, it's gratifying to know that you have stopped something wrong in its tracks. So never shy away from getting in good trouble and necessary trouble. I look at after photos and videos of the dogs I've rescued and rehomed on Instagram or Facebook. I think of all the privileges I have and how it's actually a luxury to feel stressed in my life. I say to myself, chill out, it's not a life or death situation. I squeeze a spiky amethyst rock in my hand. I wash my face with cold water and tell myself to get it together in the mirror. I dance barefoot in the yard and do cartwheels. One way to help de-stress, reduce anxiety, and even help you sleep is by using deep, relaxing breathing. And to do that, you breathe in through the nose for four seconds. Hold that breath for seven seconds. And exhale through the mouth for eight seconds. and simply repeat that process as many times as you need to feel relaxed or even take a nap. Number two is being aware of our thoughts and if we are having a negative thought that could lead to stress or to tension, then we can reframe that into a more positive angle. And one way to do that is simply by writing down 10 solutions to that problem so that your mind starts focusing on the solutions rather than on the problem. And number three, since the foods that we're eating affect the microbiome in our gut, which can then affect our mood, the more whole foods we're eating and the less junk food or processed food we're eating, the more balanced our microbiome can become. If you need to relax and just get away from your phone and spend some quiet time, then it can be a really good opportunity to light a candle or to apply a face mask. You could even take a fancy bath by adding Epsom salt and lavender to it, or you could spend some time in nature. Another great way of relaxing and unwinding is to watch your favorite movie or even read your favorite book, and that can really help to clear your head. Hi, these are my five tips to help with stress. Number one, give your spine a breather by setting your alarm every now and then so you can remember to stretch. It's really important, especially when you're working in a desk. Number two, I use apps like Simple Habit, Headspace, and Joy. It's really easy to use and they have guided meditations that last from five to 20 minutes. Another tool that I use is a oil diffuser. So whenever you are feeling overwhelmed or stressed, you can just turn it on and enjoy the aromatherapy. Another thing that I use is a gratitude journal. I write down five things that I'm grateful for every day. Another thing that is great is 15 minutes of sunshine. Not only is it wonderful for vitamin D, but it's a great remedy to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. And I cannot stress this enough, last but not least, drinking water every day. I drink four liters of water every day. It really helps with brain fog, and it could also help us keep our creative juices going. I take the dog for a long, leisurely walk, carrying a grabber, so I can pick up trash along the way. It takes my mind off sad things and keeps my focus on her and on the ground. And it feels good to know that I've likely prevented other animals from becoming stuck. Other things I'll do, I'll take 10 minutes to listen to, dance to, or sing along with music I love. I'll watch African, to be reminded that there really are animals who are out there living freely. If I'm having trouble falling asleep, I'll listen to the Sleep With Me podcast starring Dearest Scooter. It's bedtime stories for adults that are weird and kooky enough to quiet a racing mind, but so boring that there's zero chance they'll want to stay awake to see what happens. Oh. And when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is stretch. Dogs do it, cats do it, and I do it too. For me, the best stress relief is exercise, exercise, exercise. Doesn't matter what you do, but that means it's important to get a healthy breakfast every morning. And I'll also up the vegan protein if I'm gonna do something really physical that day. I also take vitamins B12 and D daily. 
I've also found that if I've got a major project to work on and I need to get away from email, I just do it. I put my out of office on, I turn off email entirely, and I work on the project until it's done. I celebrate victories whenever I can, and I cope with overall stresses by doing things like trying a new recipe, finding a workout that I enjoy well enough to actually stick with, and browsing Zillow to look at the ridiculous things that people put in their houses. When I feel overwhelmed, I make a list of the things that I need to do, what's first, what's next, and so on. Once I do the first item, I check it off and it builds momentum. If you're feeling down and you don't already work directly with animals, try to find a way to interact with them to remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing and for whom. At PETA, we can sign up in the evenings for dog walks, delivering straw in the cold weather, or other volunteer opportunities. In your area, local shelters always need help, as well as rescues for farmed animals. It's kind of immediate gratification for doing a good thing that makes you feel good. Things that help me. Letting go of unreasonable expectations and perfectionism. It lifts my spirits and maybe theirs to do something nice for someone, to help someone else out, even to start each email with, hope all is well with you, or hi, because a little warmth and kindness goes a long way. And adult coloring. Nothing helps me more than leafleting. I can see the impact I'm having on helping animals by inspiring others to make a change. So what I'd like to do to relax is work in the garden. I recently planted 100 bulbs. Now, did I plant them right side up? I don't know, but I planted 100 bulbs. Some days, things can seem pretty stressful, especially when you're dealing with things that seem like they're out of your control. That happens a lot with technology and software. So for me, I've decided I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to accept it and move on. I'm only going to focus on the things that we can control. Together, we can win this thing.